uh, let's uh, these are there are there are quite a large number of numbers that I will uh, provide so uh, it's uh, I will have a, an overview of most of them uh, uh, then of course I will make uh, the slides available so that everyone can uh, see the slides and uh, if uh, anyone has um, uh, questions specific questions on the those slides uh, uh, please let me know and uh, I can uh, provide further explanation so uh, first one uh, is no numbers of course uh, is uh, uh, just to show uh, where open source is today is really kind of uh, the Swiss knife of software there there are uh, many areas where open source is uh, um, in uh, uh, in general uh, we are about knowledge innovation open standards we are part of open government uh, and of course uh, we are in the open business open cloud and open content area so LibreOffice is quite pervasive in uh, in this uh, in this sense i already uh, i have already shown these slides this morning uh, and uh, so i will not provide additional comments on this uh, apart from the fact that uh, the growth uh, uh, forecasted by uh, analysts is uh, uh, actually uh, encouraging for uh, our project because uh, we are in a market that is uh, growing uh, not uh, two digits one digit but is a very mature market so a very mature market still growing and uh, with a very interesting figure of 32 billion 31.3 billion dollars forecasted in 2025 which is not a lot of time from today this uh, is uh, more or less uh, the the trend from analysts as you see is a is, is a flat trend but it's a plus five percent uh, every year from uh, 2021 to 2025 uh, so again uh, uh, encouraging data and uh, which uh, show a positive outlook for our project and uh, if we look at uh, other um, data provided by analysts, uh, we see uh, change, expected changes in software usage. Uh, we see that uh, while proprietary software is uh, decreasing, enterprise open source and community open source are increasing we are both in the community open source and enterprise open source so again uh, nice outlook for uh, our market and for our project and uh, uh, again uh, this is uh, these numbers are from uh, analyst uh, these uh, are um, uh, let's say that data numbers behind this uh, these uh, charts are not uh, uh, are not uh, shared in public uh, charts are shared in public as comments to analyst uh, uh, articles or blogs so uh, one of the thing that is uh, rather clear with open source uh, is uh, that is uh, um, less expensive than software as a service this is especially true if we look at software as a service provided by uh, the proprietary world so provided for instance by microsoft with office 365 of course we have a higher cost uh, in the short term because of the migration cost and the migration cost uh, uh, change a little bit based on uh, where you position the exit cost uh, from uh, the proprietary format. 
actually uh, the exit cost should be uh, cost of the proprietary platform but of course uh, uh, the there is not agreement on this point the proprietary companies say that the exit cost from their lock-in is a cost of the migration uh, and uh, therefore uh, this uh, slides in specific uh, shows the the, uh, the exit cost from the lock-in platform uh, as cost of the open source uh, uh, platform, which in my opinion is wrong. So uh, this spike would be, the first spike that you see would be lower. Uh, if uh, we compare open source and uh, and proprietary software uh, there are a few people uh, uh, that say that proprietary is better uh, as you can see the only area where uh, the, the 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 proprietary is better than open source is in uh, support and consulting services we try to uh, to um, face this uh, uh, with the our um, uh, certification project uh, and hopefully we at least for LibreOffice we should uh, uh, have a better uh, judgment or a better uh, evaluation than this 36% uh, 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 of people that think that open source is better than uh, proprietary software. But of course, uh, this uh, shows that uh, uh, support and consulting uh, are probably a weakness uh, of open source. If we look at the total cost of ownership, speed of development, quality of code, security, performance and stability, you see that the um, that there is a almost uh, a, 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 a global agreement uh, about the advantages of open source and if you look at total cost of ownership is 25 uh, percent quality of code is 68 percent and security is 61 percent so uh, when people uh, tell you that open source is less secure quality is not as good as uh, uh, show them uh, these, uh, these slides to these people. Um, open source, uh, again, uh, I, I shown this this morning, um, number from 2017, but we can say that these numbers have not changed. Uh, the open source productivity has a 16% market share. Um, if we look at planning to use, uh, it should be 18%, but let's be conservative and say that is still uh, 16%. In that 16%, of course, there is not just LibreOffice, but if we listen to what Microsoft has told us, this, these are words, so unfortunately there's nothing written, but I don't think that we will get a, a, a such a such a, a comment from Microsoft in writing, but Microsoft has told us uh, in while talking to them uh, that LibreOffice is one of the is the most requested open source software by Windows 10 users, and this is one of the reason why Microsoft uh, wants LibreOffice to be in their next. Uh, generation of uh, uh, of Windows Store, which will be announced soon, uh, uh, and it's going to be the Windows 11 uh, uh, Store, uh, which is the usage of uh, open source suite uh, in uh, by company size. Uh, we see that 70% is for uh, small companies, but in some European areas, uh, one to 100, it's not just a small company. In some cases, it's also a medium-sized company. If we think at uh, low labor-intensive uh, markets, 
16 uh, percent by uh, medium-sized companies and 12 percent by large companies as you see uh, uh, definitely higher than uh, than apple i work um, and comparable in general uh, at google offering of course uh, microsoft uh, is on a different scale but i think that uh, microsoft uh, is on a different scale uh, not just because it's microsoft and the investment on the product but also because the history behind uh, microsoft office uh, uh, which says that microsoft office is there uh, as a as an office suite uh, since uh, we could say almost forever and uh, and at least for the last 30 years so of course microsoft uh, in addition to investment advertising lobbying uh, as also the habit of people in that push uh, uh, their market share and now some numbers about uh, uh, LibreOffice. These are the commits in uh, uh, 2021, year to date. It's uh, mid-September. Uh, of course, this is just uh, a trend uh, week by week uh, of the commits. If we look at the commits by organization, these are the numbers. Uh, unknown are volunteers. It's uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, it's, um, it's difficult uh, to attribute uh, uh, a name to, to, to people, to volunteers. So uh, as the, um, the, the slide is based on organization name, of course, uh, volunteers uh, organizations are unknown and therefore you find unknown in two different points in uh, in this slide um, what you can see is that volunteers are a very important percentage and then uh, there are uh, uh, collabora red hat uh, tdf and allotropia allotropia is growing uh, uh, as you've heard from tost and is a very young company uh, and then we have, for instance, uh, NIESZ uh, is the uh, Hungarian uh, group of uh, uh, people working uh, for especially in the interoperability area and providing patches uh, in the interoperability area. They are uh, uh, government, uh, Hungarian government employees. Um, it's uh, uh, the diversity is important, and uh, I think uh, we are confirming this diversity quarter after quarter. Web late web light contributions. So uh, uh, we we have uh, started recently. We have added the web late to our dashboard. So these are web late contributions. Uh, what is important is that on WebLate there is a large number of contributors and is growing because uh, we have uh, migrated our tool recently and the web and uh, we we can uh, monitor WebLate while it was uh, not possible to monitor the previous tool uh, as it is with WebLate. Um, we uh, with time going by we will be able to provide more uh, numbers about web blade contributions. At the moment, what you can see is that we have a regular amount of contributors um, uh, every week. This is uh, Bugzilla. So this is the situation about uh, uh, Bugzilla issues by status. Um, we have uh, a number of uh, of uh, solved resolved uh, bugs uh, the green one then we have the unconfirmed which means that they are not tri triaged uh, and then uh, you see uh, bugs that need info 
they have to be verified and so on. It's uh, very important to keep uh, this curve under control. Uh, and uh, as you see from uh, this, this chart, uh, uh, we are managing, thanks to our uh, Q&A volunteers, uh, we are managing this task. Uh, this is uh, Ask LibreOffice. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the moment to now, we are using this course and not uh, uh, ask uh, as in uh, the previous uh, situ but previous uh, historical situation but we have uh, the, the 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 panel is showing the trend uh, uh, from for this uh, we have a number of uh, number of questions and and a, a very uh, and a comparable number of answers and uh, s some comments so uh, what we can say is that on average uh, what is asked uh, is also answered uh, in uh, hopefully in a, in a satisfactory way for uh, for the user of course uh, the number of uh, issues potential issues with the uh, libreoffice uh, in uh, in terms of uh, the wideness of usage is uh, incredible. If you think that uh, we uh, a productivity suite like LibreOffice is used uh, in potentially every industry, in every environment, uh, and uh, by every class of users, from the uh, new user to the sophisticated user. Uh, LibreOffice community in the last five years, I've already uh, shown this morning, uh, uh, rather steady number of contributors, uh, of course, with some fluctuations which are seasonal. But uh, what is important is that the, the, the number of uh, core and regular is uh, rather stable uh, over time. This is la last five years. And now about donations, uh, it's updated up to August. As you see, uh, we, uh, we introduced the banner uh, showing every 180 days uh, and asking for donations in September 2019. You see the difference. We, uh, the, the number of donations has increased by at least by 30 percent uh, on average uh, and uh, in addition we had the the uh, influx of the lockdown uh, because LibreOffice with the lockdown uh, uh, was uh, downloaded and used by uh, an increasing number of people uh, donations per quarter uh, the first quarter is traditionally uh the the traditionally the 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 second quarter sorry is traditionally a lower one but as you see we have uh, fluctuations and during the last two years the quarters have increased dramatically over the previous uh, uh, years these are monthly donations uh, the 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 trend of monthly donations uh, as you see, uh, in 2021, uh, 2020 was uh, the best year ever. 2021 uh, is more or less aligned. We have uh, some months which are better, some months which are lower. But in at the end, uh, the numbers are comparable. Uh, let's see what happens in the next few months, but we can anticipate that this year will be a good year for donations. These are uh, the numbers for uh, PayPal, uh, the uh, one time versus recurring. Uh, just notice that in uh, September 2019, uh, recurring were 26%, and in August 21, uh, they are 44%. Of course, uh, the amount uh, is uh, uh, lower uh, because the recurring donations are usually tiny amounts. But it, what is important is that uh, 
they there is a a, a a constant flow of donations based on recurring donation which is uh, very important for the stability of the project and this uh, is uh, stripes or credit cards uh, again uh, 16 percent in 20 in early uh, 2020 to 36 percent in uh, august 21 so an increase in this case and an increase in the amount also this is in euro if we look at the number of recurring donations uh, this is paypal plus uh, stripe so paypal plus credit cards you see that we have a, a regular increase uh, of the number and this is the amounts uh, of course the amounts uh, do not correspond uh, to the number because donations uh, one donation can be one dollar and the other one can be ten dollars so these are the recurring total recurring amounts paypal and stripe and these are the total donation amount. Uh, so these are donation uh, uh, amounts uh, at the end of each month. As you see, for the last two years, we have always, with the, the exception of one month, we have always been uh, uh, over 80,000 euro per month, and in some cases over uh, uh, 100,000 euro per month, uh, uh, which uh, provides uh, uh, the project stability. And uh, by the way, uh, all these data are published regularly. Our ledgers are regularly published on, uh, on the website. These are downloads. So downloads in 2020 and downloads in 2021 we are uh, ahead uh, about 1 million downloads uh, uh, 2020 was uh, our best uh, download year ever and uh, uh, so we we probably we will probably end uh, 2021 uh, one or two million above uh, 2020 these are downloads per month in uh, 2021 and uh, these are downloads versus donations in 2021 so you see in some cases especially when we have announcements we have a spike of donations which in some cases it's uh, makes donations go uh, over uh, download uh, downloads in term of uh, proportion uh, like it happened in uh, for the announcement of uh, 7.1 but also the announcement of 7.2 uh, created a spike uh, in general uh, the person we have uh, one uh, donation every 300 downloads which is uh, uh, could be better but it's not a bad number and this is 2021 downloads uh, LibreOffice uh, uh, versus Apache OpenOffice. So uh, we, apart from uh, one week where we were really close, uh, LibreOffice is always ahead, uh, significantly ahead of OpenOffice. Uh, so we uh, probably, we, we will end up the year uh with a weekly number of download which is more than doubled uh, than uh, than apache open office uh which unfortunately gets still a very large number of downloads but at the moment we are uh, significantly ahead and now uh, let's uh, talk uh, about uh, the the marketing plan and uh, uh the the activities that are related to to the marketing plan so we we have uh i have announced and uh, we we have now an, a libreoffice ecosystem uh, logo uh, that is uh, uh, something uh, which uh, will allow us to for instance to add uh, or create something uh, for partners of uh, the ecosystem companies 
um, to to show to the outside world uh, uh, the reach of uh, uh, LibreOffice. We have companies uh, which are uh, uh, either uh, uh, advisory board member or they are active in the ecosystem, but there are companies, uh, and uh, I can make, for instance, uh, uh, the example of Nextcloud. Uh, Nextcloud is not an ecosystem company, is not a partner of LibreOffice, but is a partner of uh, Collabora, so I think uh, we can uh, we can uh, have these companies uh, listed uh, somewhere as partner of our uh, ecosystem companies uh, uh, to to show that LibreOffice is a lot more pervasive than uh, its uh, that than its physical or virtual uh, uh, presence. Um, another idea is to create a specific certification for uh, partners, and uh, these are still to be discussed. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, is something uh, which uh, can uh, further uh, expand uh, the LibreOffice uh, uh, awareness in the market. Uh, an activity that we should uh, uh, work uh, uh, is uh, to uh, get testimonials and case studies. Uh, it's, uh, it's not an easy task. Uh, um, for some strange reasons, uh, uh, many companies uh, uh, do not want to be mentioned or featured as using a software or an hardware, but uh, we can probably uh, convince them to, to help us. Uh, we should uh, have a better representation of uh, where LibreOffice is used uh, with examples. And uh, once we have uh, more of this, uh, we can uh, definitely work with join up the european union newsletter to have testimonials and case studies uh, listed on the uh, open source uh, european uh, uh, website um, we also are uh, we we have already started with uh, a grant uh, but we will uh, increase our work uh, with educational organization. We have uh, a program in place, uh, uh, which are uh, university ambassadors, that unfortunately was uh, postponed because of the uh, pandemic. But uh, uh, we will uh, definitely uh, start uh, uh, re start to get back in touch with universities uh, uh, after the conference. The next uh, university semester starts probably in a few days. And uh, if students uh, are able to get back into uh, university, physically back into university, they will uh, also be able uh, to work with their peers to um, on a program uh, to uh, increase the usage and awareness of LibreOffice in uh, in the university. So uh, LibreOffice uh, has advantages under the, uni the, the educational point of view because uh, it's not profiling uh, students, uh, is not stealing uh, data uh without telling the user so uh, there is an advantage but on the other end uh, there is also the need to explain this advantage and to make this advantage more uh, popular in uh, in uh, in the educational organization similar in uh, ngos uh, uh, microsoft gives ngo basically the product for free 
the reality is that we are a charity, so we share the value of most NGOs, and therefore we should be appealing to NGOs uh, if only they knew more about LibreOffice. We need to make uh, uh, a dent into the NGO market uh, and explain to NGOs that uh, if they support LibreOffice, uh, they will also support the NGO idea and ethical objectives uh, in general uh, more than what they do if they use the, Libre, the uh, Microsoft Office project. So in, uh, in Africa, there are NGOs which uh, collect uh, PCs uh, uh, and give them for free to people or to local organization. In many cases, they uh, install pirate, pirated version of software uh, because in many cases they ignore open source software. So we, we, we should reach to these uh, NGOs. Uh, uh, actually, the first person with LibreOffice certification, so with the non-professional certification, is uh, an American uh, uh, living in Eswatini. Eswatini is, uh, is, a, is a country uh, inside Suda South Africa. It's a, an, enclaved, uh, an enclaved country in so South Africa. It used to be uh, called in a different uh, way or Swaziland, but because of their languages is called Eswatini um, now and uh, he is exactly doing this uh, so he is installing libreoffice on pcs that are given for free to local schools and local organization uh, we can uh, leverage work from home numbers say that uh, with the lockdown uh, uh, more people have downloaded libreoffice so we we should make these people aware of the advantages of LibreOffice. At the moment, many of these people have uh, uh, downloaded LibreOffice just because it was free. Uh, and it, this is okay, but uh, on the other end, uh, we should uh, make a better job in informing these people uh, about uh, file format availability in uh, different languages, uh, which is good for education. For instance, uh, uh, people in Eswatini was installing LibreOffice in English just because they ignored that LibreOffice was available in their native language. Uh, so they're now they are installing LibreOffice in both languages. So people are installing uh, the two version uh, they they have they find LibreOffice in two version on on their PCs. Uh, this is another opportunity that we have in term of marketing. And now uh, LibreOffice technology, um, we have uh, uh, created uh, guidelines for the use of uh, LibreOffice uh, community, which is the name of uh, the software today. LibreOffice Technology and LibreOffice Enterprise. Uh, we, uh, we are updating TDF policies to include uh, uh, those brand names. And uh, we have uh, just announced the LibreOffice Technology logo. So this is important that we as community members start uh, to use uh, these assets because this will allow us to communicate in a better and more coordinated way in the future. The, the same uh, happens to for the LibreOffice ecosystem logos. We will start working with ecosystem members uh, to, to foster the usage of that logo and uh, also uh, with the certified people because the, once you get certified you start you you have the opportunity of uh, becoming a member of the ecosystem and therefore uh, that is something that we would like uh,
people to leverage the opportunity of being a member of the LibreOffice ecosystem and supporting LibreOffice not only uh, in their daily activity, but also uh, during uh, their uh, free time as LibreOffice advocates. Um, about the LibreOffice community uh, and uh, the, the new name and uh, the, the change name of the software, um, may, I hope you have uh, you have seen that uh, we have improved the, the download page. Uh, we have added an enterprise users click here button. And uh, just because there is that button, uh, we the number of people visiting uh, the, the um, LibreOffice uh, for Business page has probably uh, increased uh, by a factor of 10. And uh, we still do not uh, have enough, the, the still uh, we don't have enough uh, numbers to say that uh, also the number of um, enterprises that have uh, started to contribute to the project in some way has increased uh, with the same percentage we uh, would find fantastic. But in any case, uh, we, we have started to segment better the users. Um, we, in the future, we will work uh, to make uh, a better description of what we intend for support. So what we intend for community support uh, and uh, what we intend for enterprise support. Of course, uh, uh, many many enterprises still think that as it is community supported they can leverage volunteers time uh, uh, in any way uh, we should be clear with them uh, of course uh, we are happy to provide help uh, uh, for a specific technical question but if uh, the issue is a bigger one if the issue is related to a feature, a missing feature, or a feature that has to be tweaked, is not by addressing or uh, by asking uh, repeatedly to volunteers that you are going to get your problem solved. Uh, in that case, you should use a different approach to get the support. Uh, and uh, you, because of the level of support you need, you will also start uh, have to start thinking about paying for that support because uh, uh, it's basically impossible to give you that level of support for free, especially if that level of support uh, is not uh, is something that uh, uh, asks for uh, several hours of activity or work. In terms of LibreOffice Enterprise, we have registered the business domains. At the moment, they are just uh, redirections. Uh, but uh, we are uh, uh, in the process of, because we are in the process of reviewing uh, the LibreOffice uh, website. So once uh, the LibreOffice website uh, look and feel, new look and feel will be consolidated we will uh, have uh, people uh, uh, we will have uh, people working uh, at adding contents to these business uh, domains um, we have uh, started to add uh, in announcement also mention of uh, enterprise version and also of mentions of uh, professional uh, uh, support available, professional support also uh, available for migrations and trainings. We have created a LibreOffice Enterprise uh, uh, page. Um, uh, we still uh, don't have enough uh, people subscribed to that page. So I invite all the people that have an 
interest in supporting LibreOffice and supporting uh, the ecosystem to 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 uh, log into uh, to uh, LinkedIn and uh, uh, um, subscribe to that page. It is important. Uh, LinkedIn is becoming uh, more and more a resource uh, for uh, business communication. So it is important. We have already uh, published a couple of uh, blog posts uh, about the importance of being on LinkedIn uh, and about the importance of educating people uh, to, to support uh, uh, LibreOffice and the Document Foundation of LinkedIn because uh, uh, this, uh, the more uh, supporters as a page, the more uh, posts are shared on that page, uh, the more that page is going to be visible uh, to uh, to people that is visiting uh, uh, LinkedIn uh, to get business information. Uh, and also, we have developed a guide uh, for the use of LibreOffice Enterprise Product Act. All these documents are uh, on NetCloud. Uh, I've also created several uh, slide decks. Uh, I'm adding uh, notes to them. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I made a wrong estimate at first about the time needed to add these notes. Uh, uh, so there, uh, there's still uh, a number of uh, uh, slide decks which are uncommented, but I will, uh, uh, I promise I will uh, uh, add the comments as soon as possible and share them uh, on Nextcloud. Uh, and I will also record a reference video for each slide deck uh, so that people uh, can uh, uh, see how each slide deck uh, can be used uh, for presentations. Uh, we've announced uh, uh, the uh, new uh, certification program. So there is a, there will be a bas basic uh, an online training uh, classes for certification to access the LibreOffice certified entry level. Uh, we will create this. Uh, is still. Uh, uh, we, we avoided to have too many logos in development, but now it's the time to have a LibreOffice certified logo uh, that can be used by a certified professional. And uh, we will also start uh, uh, developing uh, a marketing program uh, for LibreOffice certification. As you see, we will start working, uh, as we have announced, we will start working with LPI, and LPI will definitely help us uh, in uh, increasing uh, the outreach potential of the LibreOffice certification. Uh, and now, some new initiatives about LibreOffice technology and about uh, the uh, marketing plan. So uh, we will work. Uh, with developers to, to create some technical articles uh, to cover the technology behind LibreOffice. Uh, um, we now have uh, the, uh, the, the uh, basic skill uh, to uh, produce interviews internally. So maybe uh, this will be uh, video interviews. Uh, it's important uh, to provide uh, this material uh, uh, to the outside world uh, to explain the advantages of LibreOffice. So we, there will be articles, there will be interviews. We will also work uh, uh, more closely to the ODF uh, Technical Committee members uh, because uh, we need to provide uh, regular updates about the open document formats. So uh, also in this area, we will do some activities uh, to help uh, and to um, 
to, to reinforce uh, the concept of uh, LibreOffice technology. About the community, uh, community enterprise support, uh, I've already anticipated this. Uh, we need to make it clear that uh, uh, volunteer support uh, is not a, a service is not based on any service level agreement. Uh, while professional provide support uh, based on service level agreement, we have to make absolutely clear where the volunteer support ends and the professional support starts because this uh, is probably one area where we have not been uh, very good at communicating in the past. Um, about storytelling LibreOffice, uh, uh, we, uh, we have a, a treasure which is uh, the LibreOffice brand awareness. And uh, the uh the the search the research about uh, the uh, the level of trust in brands uh, that has been uh, performed by edelman edelman is the largest pr agency in in the world uh, uh, shows that uh, uh, the value of the brand uh, has increased during the the lockdown so the value of LibreOffice um, has increased in terms of is of course is not a is not a value that can measure in terms of economical value uh, is a is an asset that is a, 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 a um, that is uh, not uh, not monetary uh, not economic but is an incredibly important asset so. We have to invest uh, on this uh, uh, asset, uh, especially because it LibreOffice uh, has the ethical value, which uh, uh, has increased a lot during the lockdown. And uh, so we will uh, work on this subject uh, and uh, we will develop specific slide decks uh, to uh, to leverage this opportunity, we will uh, uh, develop, as I said, uh, uh, a logo for certification, and we will uh, uh, interview uh, certified professionals, and uh, we will start uh, publishing blog posts uh, with tips and tricks provided by certified professionals. During certification reviews, uh, we have uh, talked with people uh, that have their uh, own uh, tricks for uh, uh, to, to, to teach LibreOffice to use during migration. And it would be really nice to share with these tricks uh, with the community because these are uh, these are tricks uh, which uh, can improve the value of uh, each certified person can uh, and by sharing uh, this knowledge uh, we can all benefit uh, in general uh, about having a better certification and more competent people providing certification um, Last thing, uh, of course, uh, the the marketing plan uh, was about uh, uh, the sustainability of uh, free open source software. I have tried to involve uh, all the people that have written about uh, uh, for sustainability during the last 10 years, but unfortunately only three of them have uh, answered to my request. So I will uh, start uh, uh, working with these three people uh, and hopefully uh, working with these three people will uh, convince the other to, to contribute as well. Uh, it is important, uh, uh, sustainability of open source project is something 
which is key for LibreOffice as much as is key for other open source software. So uh, we should uh, invest uh, in this area. And uh, uh, I think we have the opportunity of becoming uh, the uh, leading uh, force behind uh, uh, the, the, for the for sustainability communication. That's uh, all uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the project, uh, the status of the project and the status of uh, the marketing uh, project, uh, the marketing plan. Thank you for listening. Sorry for uh, being late, but I was able to stay within uh, my time, uh, uh, even if I started late. <laughs>